Hello again. Toilet anxiety is characterized by two primary forms. One, anxiety solely from pooping in the toilet, and two, anxiety from pooping at all. In most cases, anxiety from pooping in the toilet is first to appear. Will the child also develop anxiety from pooping at all? It depends on your reactions. Sometimes, reactions that may seem most natural can exacerbate the problem and impair the toilet training process. So, how do you find out if your reactions are constructive? How will you avoid aggravating the problem? How will you help the child overcome this anxiety? How will you navigate your child to normal use of the toilet? This is precisely what I'm going to talk about in this course. But first, let's get to know the two classical prototypes a little closer. Here are the stories of Michael and Anna. Michael is three years and nine months old. A very happy child. He can only poop in a diaper. He pees freely in the toilet, but he asks for a diaper whenever he needs to poop. As soon as he finishes, he asks to have his diaper changed. He never soils his clothes. In kindergarten, he withholds. At the age of three, he was potty trained and even managed to have a few successful bowel movements in the toilet. But very soon, for no apparent reason, he began avoiding the toilet. Occasionally, he tries to sit on the toilet, but gives up after a few minutes. His parents do not remember any traumatic event that could explain this avoidance. They allow him to use the diaper whenever he wishes. They do not put any pressure on him to poop in the toilet. Now, let's meet Anna. Anna is three years and six months old. She was potty trained at two and started to wear underpants. She peed in the toilet regularly, but she would ask for a diaper for pooping. For the first two months, she was always given a diaper. At some point, her parents told her there were no diapers anymore. Very soon, Anna developed severe constipation that, requ that required an enema. Since then, she poops only in her underpants. She usually makes a few small quantities each day. She tries to resist and avoid pooping as much as she can. She tends to hide in a corner or under a table when she does it. She does not ask to change her pants and even resists when offered. She continues to walk around with the poop in her underpants. Her parents repeatedly remind her where big kids poop. They tell her about younger children than her already using the toilet. Sometimes they offer her rewards and sometimes they scold and get angry. Anna's doctor suggested trying stool softeners they didn't help either. Even when she agrees to try, she sits for half a minute on the toilet and says she has nothing immediately after she comes off and poops in her underpants. She does not agree to use a diaper anymore when offered. So what exactly are the differences between Michael and Anna? Well, Michael is still anxious about pooping in the toilet, he feels comfortable with his pooping and he always asks for and poops in a diaper freely. On the other hand, Anna has developed a total avoidance of pooping. She tries very hard not to poop at all. She does it in small quantities in her pants. The main factor determining if the first type of toilet anxiety develops into the second type is parents' reactions. Here are some of the most common parental responses. Promising rewards. If you poop in the toilet, you will get a present. In such a case, the wrong premise is that the use of, the, of toilets is a matter of motivation. In most cases, the child himself very much wants to succeed, but the anxiety paralyzes him. Promising rewards only strengthens the sensation of failure and the feeling of not being understood. Scolds. Scolds will not help for precisely the same reason. They will only intensify the child's shame, disappointment, sense of helplessness, and loneliness. Explanations, preaches, books, videos. The underlying wrong assumption here is that the child is not sufficiently aware that poop is made in the toilet. Supposedly, lack of knowledge. I'm sure you all agree with me. The child is well aware and can even give lectures on the subject. She fails just because of the powerful, unjustified, and irrational anxiety that dominates her. Comparison with other children. Look at your little brother, he's already pooping in the toilet. 
Here too, it is important to remember such statements will not be helpful at all. They will only insult, frustrate, and increase the child's sense of helplessness and loneliness. Encouraging the child to apply pressure on the pelvic floor muscle. That doesn't seem to help either. Just letting go will be much more helpful. In fact, we can compare the miserable condition of a child who suffers from toilet anxiety and gains a complete lack of understanding on the part of his parents to a child who has a visual impairment and instead of arranging glasses for him, his parents, out of complete lack of understanding, try to offer him rewards and persuading him to step up his efforts and improve his vision. Sounds crazy, right? During the decades I've been working with children who suffer from pooping problems, I've become more and more convinced that the main factor behind avoiding toilet use is anxiety. Sometimes parents can put their finger on a possible trigger, some dramatic event like experiencing a hard and painful bowel movement or a reaction of disgust by an adult around feces that fell on the floor. However, in most cases, no specific traumatic event is recalled by parents. Parents' responses to the child's avoidance of toilet use will determine whether the child will recover or if the anxiety will increase and make him withhold and avoid pooping altogether. When anxiety develops, in many cases, the child asks for a diaper for pooping. When parents understand this and cooperate, the child will continue poop regularly without fear. Preventing him from this channel only intensifies the anxiety and leads to withholding constipation, shame, and to a delay in the transition to using the toilet. Under these circumstances, the child is stuck between the devil and the deep blue sea. Anxiety hovers above his head and prevents him from pooping in the toilet. Under his feet is the pressure of his parents' demands and his own expectations of himself which prevent him from pooping anywhere else. Thus, he is actually in the worst physical and emotional spot. So what do we do? The key to the solution is patience and gentle gradual work. In the next lesson, I will introduce the methods for eradicating anxiety and of paving the way to using the toilet. See you soon!